I'd like to thank you for coming to the round table on March 24th. I want to start with a little bit of a story, and a story that's going to make a point that I'm going to run through the entire meeting. The story started in 1916, a place called Atlanta, Kansas. Small schoolhouse. Poor kid in school had the unenviable task of arriving every morning early to light the potbelly stove so the other students and the teachers would be warm when they arrived. And he did this dutifully. He did it beautifully. Every day he did it. And one day the students and the teacher arrived and the building was up in flames. They ran in there. They looked for the little boy, seven years old, with the building burning. They found him. They dragged him out of the building. They saw his legs were so badly burned, they didn't think he'd make it to the hospital. Hospital came. They rushed him to the local hospital. When he got there, the doctor took one look, turned to the mother, didn't realize the boy was still in a semi-conscious state, said to the mother, Mother, you know something? The best thing that could happen to this little boy is that he dies. It's the best thing that could happen. His legs are so badly burned, he'll be a cripple his entire life. So if God is good to him, God will kill him. This is what the doctor said. The mother gave him the look that only a mother can give, even a doctor. But it was the little boy who heard this. And that little boy said to himself at seven years of age, I don't want to die. I'm not ready to die. Not me. Not now. I've got too much to do. And he fought. And he mentally battled. And he did everything he possibly could to survive. And he survived. Only to have that doctor talk to his mother again in slow whispers, but he still heard. You know, it's too bad he didn't die. Because now he's going to be a cripple. Now he's going to spend the rest of his life in a wheelchair. He will never get out of it. He's going to live a horrible, miserable life. It's too bad he didn't die. Quite a doctor, isn't he? Well, the mother didn't believe it. And the little boy said to himself right then, you know something, Doc? I'm going to walk again. I don't give a damn what you say. I am going to walk again. Mother took him home, put him in a wheelchair, which was supposed to be his home for his entire life. And every day, she wheeled him out to the backyard. And every day, he just lied in that wheelchair, and he took in the air. His mother massaged his legs, but nothing was changing. And he had enough. One day he had enough. That was it. He threw himself off the wheelchair. He dragged himself on the grass to a white picket fence that surrounded his property. And he grabbed onto one of the stakes of the fence and he lifted himself up. You realize how hard that is without life in your legs? He lifted himself up. And then, stake by stake on that fence, he dragged his lifeless legs along. It took him two hours to go around that entire property. Two hours. He was covered in sweat. But he did it. And the next morning, do you know what he did? He threw himself on the ground. He dragged himself to the fence. He lifted himself by one of the stakes on that fence. And he went around the yard. It took him less than two hours this time. About one hour and 59 minutes. But he did it. And the third day, and the fourth day, and the fifth day, and the tenth day, and the hundredth day, and the 365th day, every single day, he dragged his lifeless legs around that yard for an entire year. Imagine this. At the end of the year, there was a six-inch rut inside that fence surrounding the entire yard where he had just dragged his legs. And at the end of that year, he decided after he lifted himself up on the stake of that fence, he was going to let go. And something happened. There was life in his legs. Not very much. He tried to take a step and he fell. And he picked himself up and he tried to take another step and he fell. But there was life in his legs. And that next day, he didn't take his wheelchair to school. He took a cane. Oh, it took him hours to get there. And each step, each step, he was falling. But he picked himself up, he took that cane, and he started getting into school every single day. He didn't need the wheelchair anymore. And a funny thing happened after about another year. He didn't need the cane. He started to walk on his own. Fast? 
No. Haltingly? Yes. Did he fall a lot? Yes. But he did it on his own. He started to walk to school every day. And then, after a few months of that, anyone want to guess the next part of this? He started to run to school. He wasn't late. He wasn't trying to catch up. He started to run to school every day for the pure joy of running. And he started to run really fast. And the next year, he tried out and made his track team. And 18 years later, 1934, in front of 30,000 screaming people at Madison Square Garden, the boy who would never walk again, Dr. Glenn Cunningham, ran the world's fastest mile. You don't get out of life what you want. You get out of life what you have to have. That's the point. Which brings me to Scott Joseph. This is a better story than the first one. Scott Joseph spent his life fat, as in a hundred pounds overweight. A hundred pounds. Folks, do you understand what a hundred pounds is? Lift one of these tables and carry it with you. That's what he was carrying around with him every day of his life. He was chronically ill. He was sick. He caught every cold in the book, every fever in the book. He had no energy whatsoever. His life was pretty damn awful. But he had solace because he surrounded himself with even fatter friends. And one day, Scott and his even fatter friends decided to have dinner at Chili's and eat a whole lot of fattening food with the other even fatter patrons so they could all collectively get fatter together. But this wasn't just any dinner, because something happened at this dinner that was going to be life-changing. Because Scott had tried every single diet in the book. Atkins, nope, didn't work. Worked for a little bit, that didn't work anymore. Mediterranean, South Beach, Sound familiar to anyone in this room? And each time, oh, he lost a little bit and gained it right back. Sometimes he gained back more than he lost. So with weight on his mind, with diet on his mind, sitting there eating the crap at Chili's, he looked out the window and with something that must have seemed like a Hitchcock movie, he looked at the power line which was covered with birds end to end. There must have been a thousand birds there. And Scott was about to make an observation that would change his life and the people around him. As he stared at those birds with weight so much on his mind, he made a remarkable observation. Not a single one of those birds was fat. How could that be? There's a thousand birds. How can one of them not be fat? And he realized, wait a minute. What animals in nature are fat? Anyone else ever see a fat bird? How about a fat squirrel, fat raccoon? And as he thought more, did some research, he realized only humans and their pets have obesity, cancer, heart attack, stroke, depression, Parkinson's, ADD. He said, is there any animal in nature with a similar digestive system, a similar physiology to humans? If they're all in perfect health, if they're all in perfect shape, what if I duplicated that animal's diet? And if you think the answer is an ape, you're wrong. Ape's digestive system is unrelated to a human's. But he discovered that a chimpanzee's is precise. It's precisely a human's digestive system. OK, what do chimps eat? After all, anyone here ever see a fat chimp? Chimp with an air belly? <laughs> chimp with love handles? Muffin top on a chimp? <laughs> chimp who's depressed? <laughs> chimp with ADD? Anyone? <laughs> well, what's their diet? Scott asked. What's their diet? It's so simple. Fruits, berries, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. 
fruits, berries, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. That's all they eat. He said, what if I eat that? What if I eat that? What if I eat like a chip? You know that 100 pounds he couldn't lose? Within months, it was gone. You know his chronic illness? Catching cold, fevers all the time, gone. Energy level through the roof. How much of that 100 pounds has he gained back? Nothing in four years. Not a single pound. How sick has he been in four years? Not even a sniffle. How much energy has he had in the last four years? He can move mountains right now. And Scott's goal became very simple, very simple. I asked him, why are you doing this? And I was sure I was going to, because I can make a lot of money. By the way, when you tell me that, I know you're full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> what he said to me is, I'm doing this because whatever worked on me, I'm going to be able to help thousands or millions of other people lose the weight, keep the weight off, weight off, live a healthy lifestyle. I want to change the world. If you go to Whole Foods, you'll find cheap foods today. H-E-B Grocery, you'll find cheap food today. By the end of this year, you'll find it at Kroger. By the end of next year, you will find it absolutely everywhere. Because when you have that kind of noble intent to go out there and make a difference in the world, to change people's lives, you don't want it. You have to have it. A man will not be denied success. Scott Gosser. Hi everybody again, my name is Scott Joseph and everything he said is uh, pretty darn close to right on it there. So um, usually a big part of what I do is I talk about diet and nutrition. I actually speak all over, all over America on diet and nutrition, so I don't talk about money that often. So uh, I'm going to sit here and do the best I can. So this is me right here, 265 pounds. I grew up eating a standard American diet. I uh, became very overweight and very unhealthy. Uh, as Stephen said, I tried lots of diets, nothing worked, we became very, very uh, frustrated. Uh, I did find out exactly what he said. I was sitting in the Chili's with my big fat friends eating big fat burritos and saw the birds out on the power line, and that was it. I started really focusing uh, a lot of my uh, thoughts on animals. And uh, it is so true that humans are the only animals on this earth that get uh, disease and illness, including uh, obesity. So uh, these are just a small amount of illnesses and diseases that humans get along with our cats and dogs are loaded. There's like a vet on every single corner. So not only did I want to lose the weight, I wanted to become healthy as well too. I think when I started learning about losing weight and diets, a lot of these people were unhealthy. And even though that they're doing a diet, um, what's that one? I see Nutrisystem. You know, you, you see the commercials for Nutrisystem, you may lose weight on Nutrisystem, but you're going to become, you're going to become very, very unhealthy, and uh, it's going to change uh, a lot for you. So, of course, I found out about chimpanzees, it all kind of came back. My first thought was, I'm going to eat like a bird, and my buddy thankfully said, you're not a bird. I said, well, maybe I should eat rabbit food, and he goes, well, you're not a rabbit. So, somehow the animal thing got there, and we got back to chimps very, very quickly. So as Stephen alluded to, we have a virtually identical digestive systems. Your digestive system right here is very simple. You just have a stomach that pushes things up, a liver that fit for, uh, filters things. You have a kidney that gives us lots of insulin because we eat lots of sugary fruits, which we're supposed to. And of course, we have our gut down here that distributes all the good stuff throughout our body. Um, so the best thing about chimps as well, too, and this is still, as of nine months ago, we did um, um, a comparison, an autopsy on a chimp and a human, and as a nine, even though we, if you believe the theory, we separated from chimps ten million years ago, and as of five million years ago, we are upright and hairless. As of five million years ago, we're still exactly the same. So for someone to say that I should eat this and he should eat that and he should eat something different and my blood type is this, uh, it's it's crazy. We're all the same. All right, so this is exactly what our bodies were designed to eat. Every animal on this earth has a specific diet. Every cow on this earth eats grass. Every lizard on this earth eats flies. Every lion on this earth eats antelope. Every big fish on this earth eats medium fish. Every species has a specific diet. 
We are mostly related to a chimpanzee, also orangutans and gorillas, but chimps are much closer. Chimps and humans are like that, and then you have orangutans and gorillas, the other part of our family. So chimps eat 60% fruit, which almost all comes in the morning before 12 noon. If there's anything you learn here today, I know I, I love talking about money, but more nutrition and diet. Anything you learn today is by the time you wake up to 12 noon, eat nothing but fruit. All the fruit you want. I don't care what it is, eat it. The best fruit on earth are berries. Strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, blackberries. 25% veggies, and of that, about 20% of that should be leaves. If you guys walk out into the woods across the street or wherever is close to here, there's any woods, it's almost all leaves, very few broccoli, or very few cauliflower, very few eggplant, very few zucchini or squash. It's almost all leaves. Chimps are very uh, uh, lazy. They just walk through the jungle just eating the leaves. So us, we call it salads. <laughs> So before noon, eat only fruit. Afternoon, eat only salads. Nuts and seeds. Nuts is about a handful. Seeds is about a palmful. And those seeds, usually you eat the apple, eat the whole apple, including the seeds. The whole orange, eat it all with the seeds. Um, it comes out to be about 75% carbs. You know, your carbs are horrible for us. Well, fruits and veggies are carbs. So that 75% of your diet is carbs, 20% fat, which comes a lot from nuts and seeds. Fat is great because when you don't eat from the time the sun goes down to the time the sun comes up, when we should be sleeping and hiding from leopards and jags and other creatures that want to eat us chimps, we go up in the trees and we hide. Dust the dog, we need fat to keep us going. And only about 5% protein. So think about this, some of the greatest land animals on earth only have 5% protein. Elephants, hippos, and rhinos, 5% protein. Moose and deer and elk and buffalo, 5% protein. Chimps, orangutans, and gorillas, 5% protein. I could go on and on and on, but 5% protein. You get plenty of protein in your kale. And nuts and seeds are loaded with protein. Kale, broccoli is loaded with protein. All this whole protein stuff is killing us. All right, so what I did is I figured out exactly what chimpanzees eat, and I threw it into a blender, and I mixed it all up. The whole banana, what's the best part of the potato? The skin. That's the best part of every fruit. Everything. So I threw the whole banana into the blender with the peel. The whole apple in there with the core and the stem. The whole orange goes in there, including the skin, the pulp, the seeds, and the nubbies. The whole pineapple goes in there with the husk, the watermelon with the rind. There's no food on earth like this right here. There's no food on earth that is better for our human body. There's absolutely no food on earth with more fiber. Fiber is what keeps us full. So we don't eat and eat and eat and eat. When you eat food that has no fiber in it, you just keep eating. This is maxed out with fiber because of the peels, the pulp, the skins, the rinds, the husk. There's no food on earth that has more nutrients, no more vitamins, minerals, polynutrients, which are more like uh, help, help keep uh, disease away, let's say. Vitamins and minerals build us up, but more phytonutrients kind of protect us. They help with our immune system, let's say. So I'm here to tell you guys there's no food, there's no food or beverage on this earth better designed, healthier for a human body than this right here. So that's exactly what's in there. So what I used, my ingredients, my secret recipe is five fruits, five berries, five veggies, five nuts, and five seeds. 100% real raw whole foods, 25 new super nutrient rich foods, closely mimics the chimps diet, includes all the peels. So if you notice, I went through a lot of different colors, oranges and reds, yellows and purples and oranges again, reds, blues, reds, black, reds. I alternate a lot of different colors. This is food is unbelievable for our bodies. Uh, it's not a juice. Juices, there's lots of juices on the market. If I take and show you a beautiful apple and I squeeze that juice, and I sell you the sugar water that comes out of it. And I throw that beautiful apple in the garbage. That's what a juice is. We are not made for juices. No animal on earth drinks juices. Juices are very unhealthy for us. It's just part of a food. Our bodies are made for the whole apple, not the sugary water that's been squeezed out and sold for us. It's food. It's definitely a meal. You drink that thing, you'll put a walloping on you, and you're going to feel great. 200 calories, it will make you full all morning long. You have another one at lunchtime, 200 calories, you're full again till dinner time. You have another one. You guys are probably eating about 3,000 calories a day. I think the average is 2,800 calories. I'm living off about 20, I'm sorry, I'm living off of 800 calories. 
You guys eat 2,800 calories. How hard does your body work to process 2,800 calories? My body processes 800 calories. I feel good. I got energy. I have plenty to build and plenty to protect myself with. It's completely different. If you use it as a meal, I don't use the word meal replacement. It's kind of an old-fashioned word, but it is what it is. I believe in the food and beverage space, food drinks are going to be the next beverage category, next food drink. We're, it seems like we're not having breakfast or lunch anymore. Uh, almost everyone I know either gets a coffee and that's their breakfast, or they get a juice and that's their <coughs> breakfast, or they have a protein shake, the worst, well, coffee's bad too, but a protein shake, a protein mix, all that kind of stuff. So we're really not even having meals any day, so it seems like we're going more for a quick, on-the-go meal. And I think these drinks, when you hold your hand, you drink, I think food drinks are going to be the next generation of juices. Convenient grab-and-go nutritional drinks. And someone's talking about energy drinks this morning, weight loss drinks. I think this is the way we're going. Our, our society needs a quick, on-the-go type of a meal. So in the 1950s, we had orange juice, the 1980s, a V8. We've had these juices for a while, but there's been no innovation in the juice category in years and years and years. It's just been juices. And I think food drinks are going to be the next type of generation. It's a juice, but way off the charts about how great it is for our human body. My core customers are current juicers and meal replacement drinkers. You know a huge part of the, 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 the a huge part of the world out there is meal replacement drinks. You guys heard of Boost and Ensure and PD Assure. It's in those cans. It's on aisle number 13 down at the bottom. It's just chemical. The whole list of ingredients is just chemical crap. So there's a lot of people who juice at home. They go out and buy a juice. They stop at Whole Foods and they get a juice. Juices, you know, naked juice, bolt house juice, those. A lot of vegans, vegetarians, people consider themselves health healthy eaters. Uh, somewhere between 5 and 10% of all Americans consider themselves a vegan or on their way to being a vegan. One third of all college kids consider themselves to be a vegan or vegetarian. A lot of health and wellness uh, stuff, sometimes we call them the hot yoga moms. You know, the people go spinning classes, they're out jogging and they're running, they're kickboxing. Uh, I think these are a great core customer, even though everyone's a core customer. The minute a child gets off of breastfeeding, there's nothing better on earth than having one of these, one of our drinks. So the, the market size refri refrigerator, this is huge, you guys, $6.7 billion a year. Refrigerated juices, meal replacements are $3.3 billion a year. Huge, huge out there. So my competitors right now, Refrigerated Juices, Naked, Bolt House, Adwala, uh, Suja, Evolution Fresh, Blueprint. Uh, I hate seeing those guys because of my competitors, but those guys, that's, this is horrible. None of these are healthy for us. So we are uniquely different than any other product on earth. We're 100% real, raw, whole, fresh food, closely mimic, super healthy diet of chimpanzee. We include all the peels, the skins, the husk. Uh, another thing we haven't talked about is HPP processing. So my drinks are good for a month and a half on the grocery store. So you say, wow, how is this juice where all of the juices are only good for a day or two because they're going to go rancid or go bad because you've broken the fruit open. Uh, high pressure, it means, it means high pressure processing. Uh, it's a little bit of a process. Imagine if I took a bottle of juice, I put it in the front seat of your car, and I shut your car door, your car fills up with water, and it gets pressurized in your car for three minutes, 70,000 pounds of pressure. That kills <coughs> all known pathogens, germs, bacteria, and viruses. And then the water drains out, and now that bottle's good for a month and a half. So that's one of the best things. This way I can basically keep my product good for a month and a half, even up to two months or three months. Uh, without doing any kind of preservatives and no kind of pasteurization. Uh, HPP is good, even though I hate saying this, but a lot of meat, salami, cold cuts, cheeses, guacamole, salsa are all using HPP. It's definitely the newest technology of processing food without using heat. We do it. Chimp food, I will bet anyone in my house on it's the healthiest food on earth. We are the healthiest beverage on earth, and there's nothing else like it on earth. We also have some meal replacement bars. I wasn't able to bring the drinks because uh, I just came up for the day and the uh, FAA did not want me to bring a big 16-ounce drinks on the, on the flight. 
I apologize for that. Uh, I was able to bring some bars up the food back there. I didn't know how many people were going to be here today, but I think there's about six of them back there, but maybe we can break them apart and give them around whatever we want to do. But these bars right here are great. Each bar, you should have, a, according to Chimp, a handful of nuts, which is about 1.5 ounces. So each bar contains five nuts, almonds, cashews, pecan, pistachios, walnuts, and they're mixed only with dates, and they're just delicious. Uh, I wrote a book on this whole thing, part of the company. Uh, we got some really cool shirts. Somebody has said to me, if you can put your logo on a shirt and it looks good, man, you are a billion dollar brand. <laughs> I'm not really necessarily selling the beverage. I'm trying to build a brand. Uh, in the future, uh, we can certainly do an organic version, a non-GMO version. We have a nut bar back there. We could do a seed bar. Uh, baby chimp food. We can put these in smaller, smaller containers. Be great for babies. Frozen chimp food. We can put these like in a popsicle type of form. A salad. I could. I mean, I've done this. It's unbelievable. Took a salad, lettuce, tomato, cucumber, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Throw it in a blender. You drink it. It's unbelievable. Uh, nut packs. We could do like a little pack if somebody wanted a full day supply of of, of, of that. Uh, I have more books and more clothing um, coming up. So progress to date. So we started the company back in July 2013. Uh, I immediately launched it uh, in about 100 different local stores. It did really good. Then we launched in Whole Foods. We partnered with two huge distributors. Distributors now, uh, we're with Kahi and Unify. They can pick up from my manufacturing facility down in Fort Lauderdale, and they can take it to any grocery store virtually in, Can in America, Canada, and Mexico. So I am set up with nationwide distributorship. I can get it anywhere. Uh, July is accepted into Sprouts out of Texas, California, Texas, Colorado. And September accepted into HEB, which is the fifth largest grocery store chain. And we're also on Amazon. Amazon took us on in both of their capacities, in Prime and as a normal user. So projected growth. Uh, Stephen, thank you for mentioning Safe uh, Kroger, I think you mentioned. Uh, but these are all, I mean, Safeway, Target, I've I spoke to almost every single one of these, and uh, we're on our way. There are so many grocery stores and so many grocery store chains out there. It's unbelievable how fast uh, that we can grow in the natural food chain and eventually get into like Publix or Kroger's, a little bit more traditional, even though they know that companies like Whole Foods or Fresh Market uh, and Wegmans would be super healthy. Uh, type of grocery stores are coming into play, so everybody's getting on this natural, healthy uh, type of projection in their grocery stores. Uh, I think schools would be fantastic for this type of product. The kids go crazy over the monkey juice. Uh, hospitals right now, man, if somebody's recovering from a, a, a surgery or a procedure, it'd be nothing better than this. Right now, Boost and Insure are in all of our hospitals. This would be way better on the stomach and the digestive system. Uh, airports, this would be great. Hotels, like in this hotel, 11 o'clock at night, looking for some deep, come down the lobby. Uh, this would be perfect. Drug stores, club stores, Amazon. A lot of home delivery stuff is happening now. And deliver 12 of these or six of these to your home, I think would go perfect. So any way, shape, or form, we can really, really uh, grow this. There's really nothing that's not out there for us. So we're, our, our revenues right now are projected at $2 million. And again, the more and more chains we get, uh, and grocery store chains understand, the buyers of grocery stores know that their customers are looking for healthier. They're looking for new. They're looking for local. They're looking for the small, cool, niche -y kind of stuff. And boy, we fit right into that. Until Coca-Cola or Nabisco or General Mills gobbles us up, until then, we'll be looking good. Uh, we believe we get our sales up to about 11 million, and we believe, if you look at some of the other companies, we believe we get to a billion dollars. Naked, Bolt House Farms, uh, Arizona Iced Tea, Red Bull, if you knew what those sales were, they got a billion dollars nailed easily, and we are far better than every one of those companies out there. If they can do it, we can do it. So right now we're seeking about 500000 to $2 million. We have a pre-money valuation of $4 million. Investment of $2 million will give us about $6 million. And we're, we're, we're willing to give a 33% equity. Uh, we're willing to talk about it, but I just always love throwing a deal out on the table, so at least we kind of know where we're, where, we're, where we're at. Our cap table over here shows that an investor would come in and do pretty good. 
Uh, if you can't do the $2 million, we can certainly work in di divisions or multiples of, of, of how it shows up here. So our use, use of funds, what we'd really like to do is just get a little bit more staff. We're a little bit underwhelmed right now. We'd like to hire some staff. A lot of great trade shows out there where all the food buyers come to these natural food products. I don't know if you've ever heard of the KE food shows or the natural products east and west, fancy food shows, uh, spring and fall. These are huge shows. You know, 200,000 grocery store buyers go there looking for cool, new, great products to go on their shelves. Office rent, other stuff. So only about 300,000 takes care of our operating expenses. But we really believe a big part of our play would be marketing and advertising. And so we'd love to do some more in-store samplings. A PR agency. Stephen did a great, he'd be a great PR guy for me. But we have a great story to tell. This is not just a juice and it's raspberry flavored, or it's a coconut with raspberry flavored coconut water. We're a whole new thing with a great story behind it. And I think PR, we'd get a lot of bang for our buck. Social media, I think this whole chimp food thing would be great on social media. Uh, radio ads, billboards, I think the whole thing, it just reeks with really a great return on investment with our advertising money. We're not selling a new screwdriver, we're not selling a new golf ball. This is really where everyone on earth could really benefit from our, from our, uh, our product. Production costs or drinks are made to water, so we have to worry about that so much, and our sales costs will be covered by the food brokers. Uh, food brokers help get us. These are huge food brokers out there. This food and beverage is a huge world. We don't have to reinvent the work, work, uh, wheel. We don't have to really do anything. There are people out there that are in bed with all the grocery store buyers, and they would love to have a product like ours to go out there and shop something new and exciting to these guys. They all take a commission, and we've spoken to almost all of these people here. So our marketing plan helped get us off, off the shelves, as we said, in-store sampling. This is actually me right here in a Costco out in Los Angeles. Uh, PR, social media, local advertising. These are all great ways of us. Uh, I want a little billboard to sit down there. Uh, great ways of promoting our company. So in the future, the way that all this, this whole world works is I'm going to build this company up to around 3 million in sales, 5 million in sales, maybe 10 million in sales, no doubt about it. Coke, I've already spoke to Coke. Pepsi and Doctors, uh, Dr. Pepper. I spoke to General Mills, Campbell's, and Kellogg's. I spoke to Clorox. Uh, I spoke to one guy at Haines Celestial. I've never spoke to Hershey's. But these companies are gobbling up because they don't really have the innovation that they need in store. So with all these new, niche, cool little companies, these big boys are gobbling up. They're not really Coca-Cola. They're a beverage company. All of these, I think my next slide is going to show this. There you go. Let me jump ahead. So all of these companies basically own juice companies, power here, you have Minute Maid here, you have Tropicana here, Powerade by Coke, Gatorade. You can see they have water companies, juice companies, coconut waters, smart, uh, uh, more coconut water juices, juices, water companies, Gays, uh, Gatorades, uh, Powerades. So if you can see, all these companies, they're gobbling up coconut waters and juices because that's where beverage is going. So every one of these companies would love to have uh, chip food on their side. And the money is huge. Coca-Cola paid $4.2 billion for vitamin water. Dr. Pepper paid $1.7 billion for buy. Campbell's, $1.5 billion for Bolt House. Pepsi paid $780 million for Sobe. Or know about muscle milk. Just look at look at these numbers. So basically, when I get my company up to about five million dollars, which is only going to be in a year or two, this is where I'm going to be worth. So here's a return on investment, which I think if somebody put in two million dollars, which is about three years, I believe I can get you about twenty million dollars back. Uh, our five million in revenues in a few years will give us about a sixty million dollar investment. If you have a third of the company, it's about a twenty million dollar return. That's a 10 times return on your money, which I think is great. Uh, this is me right here, and this is my vice president, Bonnie. She tried to make it up here, but couldn't make it up here. Uh, we just got off of a long eight-day uh, health cruise thing, and uh, the schedule just didn't work out uh, very good for us. Uh, I've got a great board of advisors right here, Cliff Locks. He works a lot with Amazon, Walmart, Target, and Best Buy. Peter Swanson was with uh, Pepsi 40 years, with Pepsi, president of Pepsi for 40 years. 
So my board of advisors, Jeff Sorwinski, is with Klondike Ice Cream Bar. He's a CPA for Klondike, Wilbur, Popsicle, Creamsicle. And you know what he put up here is Big Wheel. Remember those little Big Wheel things we'd all ride? Uh, he was also with them right here. Some of my other people on my board of advisors, Andy Stallone, my VP of Sales. He's been with Arizona Iced Tea, Red Bull, Fiji, Monster Energy, Adwala, Nantucket Nectars, and Hanson's. Jeff Grad is on my board of advisors. He, he invented Naked Juice. Co, co uh, his other buddy helped him. And then after he invented Naked Juice, he did Evolution Fresh, which now sold out to Starbucks. Every single Starbucks is uh, Evolution Fresh. And Dr. Alvin Berger, this guy is a rock star in the nutrition and the diet uh, industries. And he was with Nestle Research Center. I don't even know how long. It's been like 30 years. I don't know what he's saying now. I know exactly. I think it's a great investment, you guys. I think food drinks are the next beverage category. It's super innovative. There's nothing else like it. We are the first to market. We're very disruptive in the food and beverage space. We're a great brand uh, with true meaning. We're a thought-provoking name with eye-catching packaging. Uh, it's a huge $10 billion market that happens every single day. And we have patent pendings. We have patent pen. We, we own the trademark on the name and the logo. But we have patent pending. Uh, no one else will ever be able to make food that mimics a chimpanzee's diet. And we also have patent pending that we use the peels, the pulp, the seeds, the skins, the rinds, the husk, and make it into a drink. Uh, we think we're going to get both those patents because no one else uh, is doing anything close to that. Chimp food. Let's get chimping. There you go. And that's my last slide. How about that? Thank you.